Hello. Welcome to First Christian Church Disciples of Christ in Bardstown, Kentucky. We're so glad that you were able to join us for worship today. We'd invite you to have with you some type of communion if you would like to share with us. We believe that all are welcome to share around the table. So I invite you to have some kind of drink and some bread with you to share. Next Sunday, we will be having Meeting Jesus at Home. We're going to be talking about the books of the New Testament. That is for children of all ages. So you can uh, pick up your supplies at church by Thursday, January 14th, and contact myself for the Zoom link. Youth group will be meeting today at 2 o'clock. Invite all of our middle school and high school youth to join us. Monday night at 6.30, we have an education and membership meeting on Zoom. You can contact Calandra or myself for that Zoom link. Tuesday night at 6 o'clock p.m., we have a worship and music meeting, and that will be also on Zoom, and you can contact Kathy or myself for that link. Wednesday night, we have Bible study at 6 p.m., and we are going to be looking at uh, study books to use this next several weeks. We have one on women of the Bible or disciples of the Bible and a couple of other ideas. So we'd invite you to join us as we prepare to our study time for the next several weeks. Food donations. We're starting back in this new year and we will have a contact free drop off point on the second and fourth Monday. So that is tomorrow, Monday, January 11th. And it's right out here next to the church van under the overhang. And there will be a table. You can just drop your food and drive off. So thank you very much in advance. Room in the Inn is still looking for people to help with meals and donate items for lunches and breakfast. If you'd like to help out, see Kelly or Dorsey to volunteer or Michael to help with intake. Let us now prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we listen to our prelude. Strengthen our faith during our, our Bible study and prayer times. 
And we remember the prayer that Jesus taught those first disciples saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now I'll ask the children uh, to... Oh, wait, we are going to have a hymn sing here. We're going to sing hymn number 480, I Love to Tell the Story. to get to God. And when we are baptized, 
That's when we began our ministry. Well, I know you're not a minister like Jackie and I are ministers, but uh, everybody has a ministry to do, even you. Did you know that? You do. You don't? Well, 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 I think you have a ministry to do. Is there something you enjoy doing? Well, it is. Well, what is it? You know, that's right. You like working with children, don't you? That's right. So I think that's a great ministry. And there are all kinds of ministries for us to do. And our baptism reminds us that we have something special to do that God has put us here on earth to do. So I encourage everyone to remember your baptism today. And like you, if you've not been baptized, let's think about that. Let's think about giving your life to Christ and being baptized today. Let's start giving that serious thought, especially as we move closer and closer to Easter. I know it's out there a little ways, but we need to, be start, we need to start thinking about that. So are you ready for our prayer today? Okay, let's have our prayer. Dear God, we thank you for Jesus. Dear God, we thank you for the children. Amen. Thank you. We come to our, we come to our time of offering. And as we do, I would like to share a scripture with you. Psalm 41, verse 1. Blessed is the one that considers the poor and the outcast. The Lord will deliver them in time of trouble. Will you pray with me? O oh God, give us generous hearts that we might consider the poor and the outcast, those who don't know where to turn. Bless that which is offered in your name, that it will help to share your love in this world, that it will help to further the ministries to which you have called each of us. In the name of your Son we pray. Amen. As we prepare for our time of prayer together, we invite you to sing with us a sweet hour of prayer.
We also want to keep in prayer the family and friends of Gerald D. Gerald has been on hospice, and he is the uncle of Betty M. and also a beloved family and friend of many people. He passed away last Sunday. We've also been asked to keep in prayer Jean and another friend who are dealing with major health issues, and these are friends of Barbara B. At this time, let us turn to God in prayer. As we turn to God, we remember that each week we share that our identity as part of the Christian Church Disciples of Christ is to bring wholeness to a fragmented world and to welcome all to the Lord's table. We are living in a very fragmented world at this time. As scriptures remind us, I hope we have all been praying without ceasing, not repaying evil for evil, that we have sought ways to do good to others and abstain from evil. We remember that love rejoices in the right and not in the wrong. Will you pray with me? Oh God, hear our prayers. Hear our prayers of crying and despair. Hear our prayers. These last ten months have been so wearying on our souls and lives and our hearts. But this week, we still have faced this virus, and deaths and infections are growing and looming over us, and we have seen our Capitol building attacked. We have seen things we never thought to see in America. Oh God, we cry out to you in our suffering, in our fear and anxiety, in our despair and sorrow. Forgive us, O oh God, for allowing racism and bigotry to be accepted in a country that claims to be Christian. Forgive us for not loving as we have been loved by you. Forgive us for failing to love you and love our neighbors as you love us. We turn to you in the midst of pain, knowing that you sent your own son to live among us, and he understands all that we face and fear in this world. We turn to Jesus, O oh God, because he came to offer a peace, not a peace that this world knows, but peace for our spirits that will help us to get through these difficult days. O oh God, we cry out for your peace so that we can continue to share the light you have to offer. O oh God, give us strength and hope that we might offer healing and wholeness in this fragmented world. O oh God, hear our prayers. We pray for those who have lost loved ones this week. We pray for the families and friends of Lori and Gerald. We pray, O oh God, for those who lost their lives and those who were injured this week due to the attack on our Congress. We pray, O oh God, for those who are dying from COVID, from their families. O oh God, hear our prayers. We pray for those who are suffering with health issues, so many different ones. We pray for Sherry, as she begins her treatment for lung cancer. We pray for Tristan starting treatment for lymphoma. We pray for Jean and another friend with major health issues. Oh God, hear our prayers. Hear our prayers and help us to be a light for love for all people. Help us, oh God, to share a love that comes from you, to put aside hatred and bigotry and racism. Oh God, hear our prayers. In the name of your Son we pray. Amen.
lesson this week is taken from the Gospel according to St. Mark, that first chapter, beginning in, with the fourth verse and going on through verse 11. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved, with you I am well pleased. Here is the reading of God's holy word. When was the first time that you really felt alive? Now, I'm not talking about your birthday. I'm not wanting to get into some debate on when life begins after conception. No, that's not what I'm wanting to uh, review today at all. But when did you first feel alive? When was the first time that you did something or experienced something or felt something and you knew right then that that's where, where God, what God wanted you to do and you knew you had a purpose and a mission and a meaning for your life? Well, this is what happens today at the baptism of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. When Jesus is baptized by his relative, John the Baptist, in the Jordan River, he comes up out of the water and the Holy Spirit descends upon him like a dove. And a voice cries out from heaven saying, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. This marks the very beginning of Jesus' ministry. After this point in his life, after Jesus has his temptation experience out in the wilderness, Jesus does his ministry, his purpose in life. He preaches, he teaches, he heals, he does miracles. He proclaims the good news of himself to the world. He dies on a cross for our sake and is risen again three days later. He comes to save us from our sins. There are those moments in our lives when we realize that we have a purpose, a passion to do something greater than ourselves. Perhaps if you're a teacher, maybe it was the first day that you got to teach a class and a particular student, student understood something that you had to offer as a teacher. Perhaps it was something you made with your hands and you knew from that moment on your purpose was to, to do things and to fix things and to build things for the glory of God. Perhaps it's when you first got to be a leader at something you knew Leadership was what you were supposed to do. Maybe it was being a pastor like Jackie and I. Maybe it was being a healer of some sort, either emotionally or physically. The list goes on and on and on. Maybe it's working with seniors. Maybe it's working with children. Maybe it's working with people in between. Helping people with finances. There is no end to the missions that God has for each and every one of us to do in our lives. Our baptisms mark the point as Christians where we realize that we belong to something greater than ourselves. We belong to the family of God. That we are made to do a ministry. Now you don't have to be ordained like Jackie and I or maybe you're led to do so and I hope if you are led to do so, that you will take that moment upon your life, that you will make the most of that. But we are all led to do some kind of ministry in this world, each and every one of us. We're not here just to wander around without a purpose, 
But we are put here with a purpose, a mission to fulfill for the glory of God through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Mark is the shortest of the Gospels. Uh, is written right after the destruction of the temple in 70 AD, many scholars believe. And Mark, like John, do not have any birth narratives about Jesus that we've been talking about through Advent and Christmas recently. They jump right in to the baptism, to the ministry of Jesus Christ. Folks, what is your mission in life? What are you put here to do? Maybe you haven't had that aha moment, that moment of the Spirit yet that has awakened you to know, oh, this is what I'm here to do. Or maybe you've had it and you haven't realized it yet. But I pray that you will have that moment and our baptism is one of those moments. We proclaim Jesus as our Lord and Savior and we are baptized into a baptism like Him. And we become part of the family of God. We become a Christian. And we begin to walk in the ways of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Folks, there, as I said, there is no limit to the ministries that we have to do. And I want to say at this time in our nation's history, it is more important than ever through this pandemic, through our political unrest, through our racial divisions and, and violence, it has never been more important in your lifetime or my lifetime to stand up and to fulfill the missions that God has called us to do through our baptisms. Folks, we need to be setting the example in love, in kindness, in humility, helping those in need, in civility. Yes, we have our differences as we see played out rather graphically this last week in the attack on our Congress. Folks, we have always had divisions in our nation. But we are at our worst when we let those divisions divide us and pit us against each other and cause us to hate each other and not respect each other and act out in violent ways that only cause destruction. We are at our best when we realize that it is not us against them, but it is always us and them working together, compromising, doing the best we can for the common good of all the people of our nation. Everyone, no matter where you come from, no matter the language you speak, the color of your skin, how much money you have or do not have in the bank, when we work together for all, that's when we're at our best as Americans. And when we do that as Christians, we're at our best. As Christians, when we're helping those in need, when we're showing kindness and love and respect and courtesy, especially to those folks, as the Bible tells us again and again, especially to those folks who do not agree with us, who maybe we don't even like very well, who may not like us very well because of the opinions that they or we hold or both. But folks, we need to be Christians. We need to be living out our baptisms, especially at this crucial moment in our American history and the history of our world facing this pandemic that has put us all in the same boat together. We have to work together, not separately, but together to do what God wants us to do. I received uh, a letter a couple weeks ago, right before Christmas, from one of my... I don't want to say former teachers because he still teaches me so many different things. His name is Gene Alexander, Mr. Alexander, I still have to call him even after all these years, Mr. Alexander, uh, was at, at one time uh, my fifth grade homeroom teacher, my English teacher. He has been my principal. He has uh, been a deacon elder at my home church and my Sunday school teacher at one time in my home church. He has really been one of my biggest influences upon my life uh, academically and also spiritually. And he's still doing ministry today. He's in his 80s. It's a lot harder for him to get around. He has to use a walker, but that doesn't stop him. Still has the same Christian enthusiasm that, he, that he's always had in his own life, the same passion 
to take care of his students. And we all knew as his students, we weren't just a kid in his class. We were one of his kids. And he made us feel loved and special, each and every one of us. And he sent me a letter with $20 in it a few weeks ago. And I thought, Gene, why are you sending me this letter with $20 in it? I, I, I don't understand. But as I read the letter, it reminded me of a story that he had told me many years ago. He said when he was in college, and I know he didn't include this in the letter, but I know he had a full ride to a really nice university a few hours away from home. But he had to come back home and give up that scholarship at that university because his father died. He had to come home and take care of his younger siblings, so he worked to take care of his family and attend another university uh, nearby that he had to work full time to take care of his family and to pay for his tuition to graduate from that local university. And he told the story in his letter of the minister then, who, who, I did, who was long since gone when I grew up in my home church, but I met him years later of my home church pastor coming to his family during their hour of need when his father passed away. And someone from the church gave the pastor $20 to give to the family to say, here, do something with this to make a difference in your lives or the lives of others. And that was the message he gave to me. Here's $20, Jim. Do something to make a difference in your life or the lives of others. And and I donated it to a ministry here in Nelson County. And I wrote a letter back uh, to him explaining what I had done with the money that he had entrusted to me. He's still living out his faith, living out his baptism, being a teacher to his students even after all of these years. And even though his, his health is failing in many ways, he is still strong in his faith. Folks, those are the kind of things that we need to be doing, living out our baptisms day in and day out, never failing to realize that we are Christians, never failing to show love, respect, kindness, generosity, helping those in need, encouraging others also to make a difference in the cause of Jesus Christ. Folks, remember your baptism, because that is the real beginning to our lives as Christians. The day that we became, we died and rose with Christ and became alive in Him. That's the real beginning, our baptisms. Let us pray. Almighty and most wonderful God, we thank you for the gift you have offered to each of us through the gifts of confession of faith, being saved and being baptized in you, no matter how we may be baptized, dear Lord, older, younger, immersed or sprinkled. It still symbolizes that same thing that we need to get out and do your will. We have a ministry to perform. We are not just ourselves. We are part of the family of God. We are together. We have a responsibility to the human community and to this, your earth, and all the creatures on it. Remind us of our baptisms, dear Lord, the real beginning of our lives, our lives with you. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. If you've not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life, if you've not been baptized, let us help you, help you make that beginning in your life. Please contact us here at the church. Contact us on Facebook. Give us a call. Give us a text. Shoot us a message. We want to hear from you. Our whole purpose is to introduce people to Jesus Christ so they can know Him as Lord and Savior of their lives. And let us help get you started with your confession of faith and baptism this day as well. Also, please prepare yourselves for a time of communion that we will share. The table is open to everyone in the Christian Church Disciples of Christ. Prepare yourselves to come as we sing our hymn of communion.
to the table that Jesus Christ and our Lord Savior has prepared for us. Please bow your heads in prayer as we pray this morning. Dear Lord Jesus, you were wounded for my transgressions, bruised for my inequities, and died on Calvary's cruel cross to pay the redemption price for my sins. As I come to this communion table today, I kneel before you in grateful remembrance of what you did for me at Calvary. At Calvary. With your heart full of humble thanksgiving, I confess that I have not loved you as I ought to have, have not loved my neighbors as myself, and so I ask that you would cleanse me of all my wrongdoings and self-centered thoughts. Thank you that I have been washed in the blood of the Lamb and clothed in your own righteousness before the grace through faith. I praise your name forever and ever. Amen. For I have received from the Lord what I also deliver to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed, he took the bread, and when he broke it, he gave thanks and broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This is the cup, is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us pray, please. Almighty, most wonderful God, we thank you for the awesome opportunity to accept your Son, Jesus, as Lord and Savior of our lives, and to be baptized, to walk in the Christian way, to know that we are loved, we are part of the family of God, we are not alone, forsaken, but that you are with us. You have called us to a greater purpose in ministry in this life. We ask that as we leave this place, that you be before us and be behind us, be to our right hand and to our left, above and below us, until such a time as we may come together again on this side of the river or the next. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.